الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد My talk today is concerning a story that we find in Sahih Muslim. And this story, there are many benefits that we can find within it. And it establishes for us an important fact that the youth are the future generations of tomorrow. However, the youth will only be able to face the challenges that will come if their tarbiyah, their cultivation, is a cultivation that is done upon the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This tarbiyah, it can't be just left to YouTube or Google or other outlets, TikTok or other than that. Because the one who is raised on that, and that's all they have, is like an empty shell. Outwardly, they may look great, but inwardly, that type of individual, and Allah knows best, is not prepared to face the challenges and the obstacles of life. Because in life, there will be good times, and in life, there will be difficult times. But alhamdulillah, we have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Muslims, we believe that with difficulty there comes ease. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned ease twice. Because there was ease before that difficulty, and by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will be ease after it as well. And the story I'm going to read, inshallah, with a few comments here and there, because in reality, the story in itself is sufficient for the one who contemplates and reflects is the story of the young boy and the king and the magician. And this is the beauty of studying the books of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam haqiqatan is like Noah's Ark. Whoever gets on board, they will be safe and they will be secure. And that is the only way to prosperity. Al Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, he mentioned on Suhaib and Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, called the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said. And look, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told the companions about this story at a time where they needed encouragement. Naam. And obviously, we are, in a, we are in a time where the Muslims, they need encouragement. Encouragement to be firm upon the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal, encouragement to be patient, encouragement. And the Prophet Sallallahu he was the best teacher. And this is also a benefit for the parents. In order to prepare the, your children for tomorrow, these are the stories that we need to be teaching them. If you are just familiarizing the children with football players, what can we expect from a generation who idolize football players or comedians or worse than that, rappers and the like? The Prophet Sallallahu he said, كَانَ مَالِكُمْ فِي مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ There was a king that came before you. وَكَانَ لَهُ صَاحِرٌ And he had a magician. And when the magician he became old, he said to the king, Inni qad kabirt. I've become old. Send me a young boy. السحر, so that I can teach this young boy magic. And that is why we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to rectify the state of the Muslim rulers always and to give them good companions. Because good companions have beneficial effects upon those in authority. And that is why some of the Salaf look at their wisdom and insight. They mentioned if I had a supplication that I knew that was answered, I would make it for the ruler. Because if the ruler is upon righteousness and piety, inshallah, the benefits will be felt by the rest of the society. And it's not bootlicking. 
The one who has that mentality is sick. That is wanting good for the ummah. That you make dua, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify those who are in charge of the affairs of the Muslims. So this king, he had a magician, an evil bitana, evil associates and advisors. And when the magician became old, he said to the king, I've become old, send to me a young boy so I can teach the young boy magic. Why a young boy? Because when someone is young, it's easy for them to memorize. That's why when the children are young, teach them to memorize the Quran. That's the age. To focus upon what? Hifd al-Quran. Yes, established from the, for them as well. The fundamentals of belief, as we will see likewise in this hadith. But that is the practice of the Muslimun. Min al-awwal, from the beginning, that when children are young, you allow them, you teach them as much Qur'an as you can. Because when you memorize, when you are young, it's like you inscribe something on a stone. It will remain, inshallah ta'ala. And that is why some of the Salaf in the beautiful Athar that I like to mention, they said, لا تزالوا هذه الأمة بخير ما تعلم ولدانوا ما القرآن This nation will not cease to be in a state of good as long as the children, they learn the Qur'an. And it's not just reciting the Qur'an, you know, putting up a camera and filming yourself with beautiful recitation. That's not going to change the ummah. It's learning the Qur'an, memorizing it, teaching it, and implementing it. Sincerely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And adhering to it at good times and hard times. That is what's going to change the state of this nation. Like this young boy, what he learned, he adhered to it. Even with the persecution that was going to be faced. And as we will see, yes, you as young people, don't look at it with the mentality that sometimes the youth are fed. You know, you're young, you can't do nothing. No, you are young, but you can change a nation. If Allah grants you success, young Muslim, male or female, Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala, possibly through you, Allah may change the state of an ummah. This young boy, he was young, and Allah Azza wa Jal, through him, guided a nation. So it comes in the hadith, فَبَعَثَ إِلَيْهِ غُلَامًا يُعَلِّمُهُ The king sent to the magician a boy for the magician to teach magic. And we know magic is kufr wal-iyadu billah, disbelief. فَكَانَ فِي طَرِيقِهِ إِذَا سَلَكَ رَاهِبُ فَقَعَدَ إِلَيْهِ وَسَمِعَ كَلَامَهُ فَأَعْجَبَهُ On the way to the magician, the boy, he met a rahib, a monk. This monk, من أهل التوحيد, was from the people of Tawheed. And this, brothers and sisters, highlights the importance of sitting with the people of knowledge, especially the seniors from amongst them, and learning from them, and the positive effects that they will have upon you in your life. Look, this young boy, through him sitting with this rahib, this monk, who is from the Muahidun, the people of Tawheed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him. So this young boy, he would sit with the monk. And he would listen to his kalam. What was his kalam? About iman. Belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. Belief in his lordship. Belief in his names and his attributes. And belief that only Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala has the right to be worshipped. Tawheed. And when the young boy heard this message, it amazed him. He was fascinated by it. Why is that? Because al-fitra salima. The innate disposition is going to be attracted to that. If the child is not corrupted, it's going to gravitate towards it, Tawheed. It's going to find it sweet to the heart. So the young boy would listen to the rahib, the monk, this muwahid. And he used to find his speech fascinating. In opposition to the magician, because magic is kufr. Al-istana shayateen seeking the aid of devils and all of the various types of witchcraft. Person sees that immediately, you know if the fitr is salima, that's wicked. It's darkness. فَكَانَ إِذَا أَتَى السَّاحِرْ مَرَّ بِالرَّاهِ وَقَعَدَ إِلَيْهِ فَإِذَا أَتَى السَّاحِرْ ضَرَبَ So, when this young boy used to go to the magician, he used to pass by the monk, meaning and sit and learn with the monk, Tawheed, because he was amazed by a Tawheed. He had a love for Tawheed. Fitra, likewise sound logic. Also submitting to Al-Wahi, what was revealed by Allah Azza wa Jal. But obviously this delayed him and he would go to the magician and he would be late and the magician would beat him. Again, there's a benefit in that, Ikhwan. 
يعني التعلم والتعليم مبني على الرحمة. Learning and educating our children is built upon mercy, even one another. We want good for one another. I don't want to see any brother or sister destroyed. Whoever wants to see somebody destroyed from their brothers on their, or their sisters, that's a disease in their heart. Regardless, we want the non-Muslim to be guided. Muslim. What about your Muslim brother or your Muslim sister? So look, this Sahir, Nam, who was Sharir, obviously a wicked individual. The child was late, this young boy used to beat him. Obviously, that type of treatment is going to push somebody away. That's why parents have to be wise. You can't always have the stick. You can't always have the stick. Some people, they are too harsh when they are dealing with their children and their children. If they have the opportunity, they're going to run away. May Allah protect us from that. When they have the opportunity, if you're too harsh, meaning there's no recreation. Children, they like recreation. They like to play. That's not against the Sharia. Rather, we see that in the texts. If it's only discipline and harshness, they're going to flee. And that's why, brothers and sisters, we should always remember, learning is based upon mercy. Your students should feel that you want good for them. The teacher should feel from the students that the students want good for the teacher. That's the relationship. So therefore, the, the young boy, Fashaka Dalik al Rahib, he complained about this mistreatment to the monk. So the monk came with the solution, Faqal. He said, إِذَا خَشِيتَ السَّاحِرِ فَقُلْ حَبَسَنِي أَهْلِي If you fear that the magician is going to beat you, then say, my family have, have you know, delayed me. وَإِذَا خَشِيتَ أَهْلَكْ فَقُلْ حَبَسَنِي السَّاحِرِ And if you fear that your family are going to be upset, then say that the magician has delayed me. Somebody may ask, well, what is that? Some of the ulama, they say that is tawriya, meaning there's a, there can be a true under, understanding to that based upon the intent of the one who said it. So when he's saying, and I'll just give a brief explanation without going too deep. When he said, my family has delayed me, some of Ahlul Ilm say that the rahib, the monk, because he's somebody who is teaching him, and likewise we will see that the boy ends upon the religion of the rahib, that monk was considered from that nahi, from that angle to be his family. And there are other explanations, but we'll just suffice with that. Naam. فَبَيْنَمَا هُوَ كَذَلِكْ إِذْ أَتَى عَلَى دَابَةٍ عَظِيمًا قَدْ حَبَسَتِ النَّاسِ So on one occasion, while this was taking place, the boy, he came across a large beast, a large animal that was preventing the people from going about their business, continue, continue with their journeys. فقال, the young boy, he said, الْيَوْمَ أَعْلَمُ أَسَّاحِرُ أَفْضَلْ الرَّاهِبْ أَفْضَلْ أَمِ السَّاحِرُ He said, today I'm going to know for sure. Is the monk better or the magician? He said, today, اليوم أعلم أَسَّاحِرُ أَفْضَلْ أَمِ الرَّاهِبْ I'm going to know today whether the magician or the, يعني, is better than the monk. Which one's better? The monk or the magician or the magician over the monk? فقال فأخذ حجرا The young boy he took a stone فقال اللهم إن كان أمر الراهب أحب إليك من أمر الساحر فقتل هذه الدابة حتى يمضي الناس He said oh Allah If the affair of the monk is more beloved to you than the affair of the magician then kill this beast or this animal so the people they can go up continue with their journeys. 